So land flipping was the right thing for me because we didn't have to deal with all these things. But land flipping gave us the cash, gave us the confidence, gave us the capabilities, and gave us the courage to then after a while go, you know what, we made all this money, let us buy a few single family homes and invest in that. Welcome to the Get Real Podcast. Your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. I'm Ron Phillips here with one of my favorite human beings. Uh, unfortunately, you're not as lucky as I just was because. Um, Jack's wife just walked into the room, which is another one of my favorite human beings. Um, today, we're going to talk about, um, wow, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff because Jack and I go way back and I really like him. Um, Jack Bosch, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Ron. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Man, let me, let me introduce Jack properly um, because I, I've known Jack so, I, I don't even know how long now, but I met you, I think the first time I met you in um, Collective Genius if I'm, if I'm right, maybe even before that, I don't even remember. Even but. before that, I think I have an iPad that you gave me for some That's land right. deals that you wanted to do. Oh right. my gosh, that is even way back. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, I don't even know how long then. So Jack and I have known each other for a long time, long time. Um, Jack is known by most people as the land guy. Um, not only did I not only were Jack and I in a mastermind together um, called the Collective Genius, but I joined Jack's mastermind, the Ultimate Boardroom, um, and was there for years, where I met some more of my favorite people in the world, some of whom I do business with on a regular basis. I met my CPA there. Um, my, my bookkeeper came from the CPA. I met CFOs uh, that I've used, fractional CFOs there. I mean, just uh, it, the list goes on and on. And I've done, I've done business with several of the other people who are, who are in the uh, group. It was a fantastic group. It's probably, it still is. I, I don't know if you guys are still doing that anymore, but it's a fantastic group. We're not, group. but we're still in close contact with many of the members. Oh man, it was, it was really, really good. Um, so Jack is known as the land guy, but he is um, an incredible businessman. And you guys will hear that uh, today as we talk about um, all of the many things we're going to discuss. Um, but Jack and Michelle are uh, most importantly above everything else. They're just, in, they're some of the greatest human beings you'll ever meet, have a fantastic family, a wonderful business, and they make an impact uh, everywhere they go. So stop the flowers, man. All right, man. Now let's get real. Uh, now let's get real. <laughs> so Jack, I mean, well, I think everybody can probably hear by your accent that you are not, uh, you haven't been in this country your entire life. Um, I'm not from Ohio, I'd, like to, right. I'd like to talk about your story. Cause I think in the late nineties is when you uh, immigrated to the United States, right? Right. I came from Germany, right? So, um, I'm originally from Germany, born and raised there, lived there, went through college there. And basically in my last year of college, I had the opportunity to go on an exchange program um, while well, I was doing a master's, so I was a little older already, but uh, still had an uh, opportunity to do an exchange program, get an American uh, master's, and, uh, and finish basically my college career here and improve my English, and that's what I did. And then uh, three weeks into it, this beautiful young angel walked by my, by, by, in front of me, and um, life was never the same afterwards because uh, this little angel is my wife of 19 years now, Michelle. Uh, we have a 12-year-old daughter, and um, and we both, and she's an immigrant herself from Honduras, Central America. So we both decided to stay in the country, got jobs through which we got our green card, but uh, soon realized that this job thing wasn't the right thing for us. I mean, for many people it is. For me, it just wasn't, right? I was kind of like the eternal college student. I was like, I delayed my entry into the job market for as long as I possibly could. Um, and I uh, always had jobs, always had, had worked and so on, but to, to finance the, the, the college and so on. But I, um, but I soon realized that while I'm a hard, hard, hard worker, I am eternally inher in, in, inherently lazy to the degree that I'm willing to work hard for a short time in order to not have to work at all afterwards anymore. Amen, brother. 
So, so, yes. so you're the expert of that. I know. But, you're, but it, same, same thing, right? I'm, you're the master I'm, of I, that, uh, Ron. You're the master of that. So, so, um, so I, uh, we realized that this, this job that I had wasn't the right job. I was a software company. I had work experience in that in, in Germany. That job was a fantastic job. It was uh, hardworking. I worked 70, 80 hours a week through the weekends, 100% travel. But at the same time, it wasn't my thing. I'm not a software guy. I don't. I know. I know. To to this day, I can't write a single line of code. I I was more of a business analyst there. And more than anything, I was 100% separate from Michelle. I was leaving Monday morning, coming back Friday night, and we just the life we lived. The money we made was, was not much. It was like a $45,000 a year job. So it wasn't, wasn't after paying a mortgage and after paying, paying car payments. The thing, you had like 400 bucks left in paying taxes. You had like 400 bucks left a month uh, to go have fun with, right? Um, after, after, after everything, we realized this is not the trajectory for us for the rest of our lives. And we started, the, we, we couldn't get financially independent with it. We couldn't get, we were deeper in debt than I was. I was worse financially off five years into that job, three years into the job than I ever was in my life, right? Because your expenses grow once you buy a house yep. and those kind of things. And I, I realized we needed to change something. Now, the issue was I couldn't leave my job because if I left my job or Michelle left her job, we would have lost our, our right to be in this country. Right? We're always legally in the country, but so we had to stick with the job because that job got us the green card. But we started doing something on the side, and that's probably what we're going to talk about a little bit, which is we started real estate investing, obviously. And after a lot of testing, we, we came into a really weird but fun, fun, fun and simple niche called land flipping. And you say weird, uh, your, your word, but I'm going to go ahead and use it because I agree with that. How in the world do you fall into land investing? Because most people who hear land investing think, you know, big developers, um, massive <clears throat> amounts of acreage, millions of dollars. It's a big deal, right? It's not a little side hustle um, like you're, you're, you're talking about. And then I think next step after we kind of see how you stumbled on your nose on, into land, it's how do you go from, a little side hustle gig to over a million dollars, I think in your first year or year and a half or something like that, right. at doing this months. little side hustle. Right. So, so we stumbled into it by really not knowing anything about real estate and not knowing what we're not supposed to do. Right. So we, <laughs> like, you don't, uh, it's like the bumblebee, right? The dumb bumblebee doesn't know that it that it technically aerodynamically is not able to fly. So it just goes and flies. <laughs> right. So, um, the wings are too small for the body size to even theoretically be able to fly, but it doesn't know that. So it just does it and it flies and it's wonderful. So um, the thing is, um, we, we actually started the traditional way. We, 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 we watched infomercials, we bought books, and when we found real estate, so we wanted to do a wholesale deal. Like with a lot, a lot of people want to start in wholesaling, because that's supposed to the simple way. Well, it is, but it has, also has some tentacles attached to it. So we got a, we did driving for dollars. We drove around in neighborhoods, found boarded up houses, figured out who the owner is, we contacted them, and got, guess what? One guy was willing to sell us their house, a triplex. But the problem was, coming from Germany and coming from Honduras, no experience in real estate, we estimated every possible repair on this thing wrong because even if it's a wholesale, you still got to know what it's going to cost to fix that thing right. in order to price it right, in order to be able to sell it right. right? So we, may, we estimated everything possible wrong. We advertised that thing. We got on a contract for $45,000. We only wanted to make a $5,000 profit on it just to prove the concept, sell it for fifty, and nobody would buy it. And now I know why. Now we have four, almost 400 apartment units. Uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have rental houses. We have rehab places. We know what it is. Now, I don't rehab places, but we have hired people to rehab places, right? Because I hire the guy to put up the, with the paintings on the wall. Because <laughs> I'm, you're work averse. I can't we do already that. discussed that, uh, Jack. We have Pardon? the same problem. You're yes, work yes. averse as well, yes. All right, exactly. So we, we advertised that nobody bought it. Now I know understand why, because... We should have gotten that thing for like five thousand dollars with with so much extra repairs that there was, and as a result, I mean, <laughs> I think I drove by the area the other day. It was actually it was torn down. There's something else now there. That was probably the right move by by whoever ended up buying it. But um, but what happens is we stumbled, we failed, 
We moved into the next area. We read Rich Dad Poor Dad. They talk about tax liens and tax deeds. We started looking into that and, and we failed there. We bought tax liens. We got those redeemed three weeks later, made $3.82 in interest. We bought tax, we, uh, with Michelle attended the tax deed auction in California and armed with all our money, which was like 3,500 bucks and got outbid on every property she, we thought we could get because the starting bid was $1,000, right? They all went to $20,000, $30,000. So she came back home with nothing. And ultimately we had an idea and the idea was, and that's what we first focused on. We went after tax delinquent property, but the idea was that if somebody doesn't pay their property taxes, they might actually be no, not interested in those properties anymore. So we said like, well, what if we, why do we have to wait until these properties come up for auction? What if we send them a letter? So we went the direct mail route to tax delinquent property owners and we started tweaked letters and we tried and finally we got it right. And we got a whole bunch of responses, like literally like a 10% response rate at that time. Holy cow. And, yeah, that's huge. And, and every single property owner that responded owned land. So we're like, what the heck do we do now? Right? What do we do with that? Right? So we, it wasn't on purpose, it was accidental. But there was one guy who basically says, if you guys want the property, pay me a few hundred bucks, you can have it. I'm done with it. I've gone through a divorce. I lost, I'm in debt. I just don't want this anymore. I want to do it. I'm leaving the state. I want to do a clean start in a different state. I just want to leave everything behind that reminds me of the marriage. And we we're like, oh, well, how about 400 bucks? He's like, I'll take it. So we bought this acre property in a small town for 400 bucks. And we figured based on like comparables and sales and, and in the area that it was worth about eight to $10,000, but the guy just didn't want it. So he's like, okay, worst case scenario, we're going to sell it for a thousand, right? But uh, so I'm comfortable putting 400 bucks on this property and see what happens. So we drove up there, put a sign on the property and the guy literally across the street bought it right that same day for $4,000. And we're like, okay, well that's, that's, that's not like enough money to retire, but it's 10 times our money. And we didn't have to estimate repairs and we didn't have to get any appraisers in and we didn't have to get a mortgage and we didn't have to get rehab crews in and we didn't have to do anything. We literally just had to buy that thing. And we thought at the time, nowadays we don't even buy them. We just put them on a contract and wholesale them or assign them or do double closings. And we're like, and we didn't have to do anything to it. Nothing, zero. Nowadays, we haven't, don't even go look at the properties. I haven't seen any of the properties we flipped for the last 13 years. I haven't seen a single property. I haven't talked wow. to a seller. I haven't talked to a buyer. I haven't talked to really anyone. Like it's all automated and it's all done virtual that you can do this from anywhere in the world. And now we teach it to in our students. We have students in, a student in Germany last week did a $25,000 profit deal from his hometown in his office at home doing, uh, doing, doing just like not being in the United States, not having seen the property, not having talked to the seller, potentially having to talk to the buyer, but that's it. So we started looking at that and then the next deal came in two weeks later and the next deal and the next deal. And, and soon enough, we're like, why even mess with houses? Not, I mean, I love houses because of their cash flow potential down the road, but for a quick flip, it's like, I can make the same money. We can take the, you can make the same money with, with land flip without all the tentacles that you do with a house flip. So why not? So to your point, when people hear land flipping, they think multi-million dollar development, but our right. properties out of five to $100,000 properties that we pick up for five to 25 cents on a dollar, we go double, triple the, value, the price of it, sell it for 50, 60, 70 cents on a dollar as a wholesale deal, or, and that's where the cash flow comes in, we love selling them with seller financing. So we buy something for 3,000 that's worth 30, we, we put it on the market for 30, get a $5,000 down payment, which pays more, which is more than what we paid for the property, and then get $500 a month over the next seven years. And, and it's pure cash flow with no tenants, toilets, termites, and those kind of things. So, and then over time, what we've used, we've, we've built this up very quickly, therefore, with this kind of 10x sometimes profits. It doesn't take that long to build it up into a nice business. So we build it up into a million dollars in 18 months. And then what it ultimately became is it became our cash machine that we now use and for years and years have been using to roll over cash into other investments. So we love houses. We put money in houses. We buy turnkey houses. We, we, we buy rental houses. We buy investment properties uh, and, and apartment complexes and things like that. But the cash is coming from over here. And what most people are trying to do is they're trying to optimize 
their own income through their job by getting a 5% or 3% raise. Well, we, we just said like, we're never going to get where we need to go in the job world. We need to do this in parallel soon enough have this replaced that, which is exactly what happened. We replaced our jobs. The moment we had our green card, we were able to quit our jobs and go full in uh, because we had paid off our debt. We had money on the sideline. We had passive cash flow coming in from the seller financing notes. And in combination, we're making more than in the job already. So we were able to quit and go full in and then start using this in the process of creating what we call forever cash, lifetime cash flow where we use our land business for cash and cash flow and then move it over into lifetime cash flow or, or forever cash. So there's two things. There's a lot of people listening who kind of have their cash cow, right? It's their business or right. it's their profession, whatever it is, and it cranks out money. Um, and they're perfectly happy with that. And I think that the thing that you said that's really important is that it's what you do with that money that's really important and allows Absolutely. you to have forever cash, right? Which I think you, is the name of your book, right? One of your right. books. Did you, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so go pick his book up, people. It's called Forever Cash. Um, but then the second thing is for the people out there who maybe want something extra or who were kind of like you, who were in a job they really didn't really like. I mean, you were stuck there because of your green card status, right? But um, a lot of people it. are stuck there just because they don't really know what else up. to do. Um, yeah, a lot of people are, I, I realize there's a lot of people with any level of income, high income, low income, they're in their jobs because they don't know what else to do, but they don't like their jobs either. Right. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. They're, they're, they literally are living in hell every day. Um, right. And, and I, I talk to those people and you and I both see those people all the time and people out there are listening and they're, and they're shaking their heads right now going, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I, I hate my they're job. Calm, they're I call them that they live in comfortable misery. Yeah. What you're saying is that those people can put together a business that operates largely without them involved on a day-to-day -day basis, buy assets or potentially even just flip assets without buying them that are relatively inexpensive, especially for people who make some decent money. Right. Um, and that you've got a couple of different exit strategies where you could turn them into cash flow or you can turn them into cash that you can then turn into cash flow. One of the, one of the three. A hundred percent. So exactly. So our strategy is exactly typically by focusing on the, on the five to a hundred thousand or some of our students are lately going beyond a hundred thousand to the two or $300,000 level. So they put a $300,000 property under contract for $120,000 and go flip it for 170 and make $50,000 in the process. Now, obviously that doesn't happen every day, but it does happen, right? So they have, you have like in the baseball analogy, you have your singles, your doubles, your triples, and your, and your home runs, right? So there's a single is like that five to 15, five to $15,000 profit. A double triple is more like the, the 15 to $25,000 profit. And the home run is like the 40, 50, $100,000 kind of deals. Not every game are you going to hit, hit a, not every at bat are you going to hit a home run, right? But it's a model that allows you to hit these singles and doubles on an ongoing basis and with that, um, great, that paid on their debt and so on. But the, exactly, the, the thing is, we created a model that once you put the pieces in place can be done with very little, I mean, with very little um, extra help in a sense. So there's automations, there's, again, we have students, as I mentioned now in, in, in Europe and in Canada and or people that drive in their RV. And, and we have guys that uh, I just interviewed uh, one for my own podcast. I interviewed one of our students who's, who's doing something like, 300 deals a year and it's his wife and himself. That's it. So if you do 300 deals in the housing world yourself, if you have three house flips a year, you have a team of like 15 people or something like that or 10 people yeah. or whatever the number is. So in our land, because there's less tentacles involved because you don't have to send out appraisers. You don't have to, you can do everything. Google maps, Google earth shows you how the property looks like, right? Um, a title company does the closing. Um, we list those properties on social media platforms like Facebook Marketplace and, and Zillow and things like that. You can virtualize everything. You can, do, um, you can do everything from the comfort of your home. And more than anything, with like, if you want to scale this big with like one virtual assistant, you can manage 100 deals plus without really spending, once it's all running, spending a whole bunch of time anymore. So yes, you can create this entire business as a lifestyle business, fully remote, location independent lifestyle business. Heck, I'm actually here right now in a hotel. We have, we have been 
kicked out of our house because we have the painters in our house. So we just take my laptop as my business. I, I can do deals from here. I can do deals from Hawaii. I can do deals from Germany. I can do deals from anywhere because all the tools are available right through a laptop or even a tablet. Isn't it, isn't it awesome that we have the ability to do that today? Uh, and it's, it's so amazing that with a few alterations to a person's life, they can do the same thing. Right. I mean, this isn't like, this isn't like magic. It's that you and I can go away for two or three months and still operate and everything still works. Uh, it, it's built that way. It's designed that way. And from what you're saying, it's very obvious. And I know you guys, so I know you guys travel for like months a year. It's not like you, you take a couple of weeks off. You guys literally go every year, I think for like two, three, four months at a, and you you traveled some really cool places that a lot of people would never see. Yeah, a couple um, of years ago, we took our daughter out of school for half a year and homeschooled her. We homeschooled her for a month with a teacher, and then we traveled for a month. We homeschooled her for a month, we traveled for a month, and we did that for like an eight-month period where we traveled about four to five months of that, and, and she had schooling for three months. But in that three months, she because it was one-on-one, she advanced the entire school year. And then when we put her back in school, she was bored the rest of the half a year because she was just had advanced through it already. But the thing is, now that she's back in school, we're restricted to the official holidays. But but yeah, soon usually as soon as the as soon as school ends, we're off traveling all summer long. Yeah, yeah, man. So so this is the get real show, Jack. So um, I I know that your program works because. Um, not only do I know you, but I know many of the people who've been through your program and um, I've done business with some of them and I know what they, I know how much money they make doing this. Um, so I know that it works, but you know, if I'm the person who has a full-time job and you know, I want to start doing something on the side, what's the biggest stumbling block to somebody who wants to start this thing? What's going to hang me up? What's going to make it so that I I'm not successful. Well, um, what I find the biggest stumbling block is it's really not the system itself because, again, typically what people stumble is on things that need too much time, that need too much, that are too complex, and so on. Well, there's really the complexity is not our challenge because we have a five-step system. You select some counties that you're going to go after. You, uh, you send out some letters. The people can respond. You make some offers. You get the deals accepted, you list them, and you sell them, right? So, I mean, that's it, right? You, you flip them. There is a little, obviously little in analysis involved on, the, on that side, but, um, but you don't have to get, again, you don't have to get um, a bunch of contractors in. You don't have to get bids. You don't have to get an appraiser. You don't have to get a mortgage on it. You don't have to do bank financing. You don't have to uh, do all these different things that you typically do that require a lot of time. And, and like, I'm, I'm refinancing some of our ho rental houses right now and I literally sent the bank 87 documents is what they needed in order to, and that's probably, they're going to ask for like 13 more. So right now in order to approve us for that loan. And it's, uh, it's crazy. Now in the land flip, it's one document. It's a purchase and sale agreement. And if you sell it to sell a financing, it's another document. It's a sell a financing agreement. That's it. You're done, right? So it's all much simpler. But what people fail at is what they fail at in everything else in life, which is that they get excited. They jump in, they spend four weeks full force, and then they get excited by something else, and then they spend four weeks over there. It's like, it's literally consistency is the key. And there's, there's a concept that we teach at our, at our seminars that we currently not don't do, but uh, that we hopefully next year do again. But that's kind of like the four stages of learning, which is that when you, when you start with something, you know you're what's called the enthusiastic beginner. You're like yep. super excited about something and you wake up at 5 a.m. and you can't, you can't stop learning about it and you're super excited. And then soon enough, you're going to realize that there is actually work to be done. And surprise, even with the land flipping, which being much simpler, there's still work to be done, right? So, so you still need to spend, you still need to ideally, if you can, like carve up a couple of evenings a week, right? For like two, three hours, right? When the kids aren't bad, go do something and then perhaps a Saturday morning or so to, to, to get some of, to move the pieces up forward. And when people start realizing that, that they don't wake up wealthy tomorrow, 
uh, that's that's more of an internal hurdle. They're like, oh well, what else is there, right? So then, what what they become the disillusioned uh, learner at this point, and then but if they push through that, then they become the cautious, cautious but optimistic, um, in, in the sense that they have done their first deal, they know this works, they made their first 10, 15 grand, they're like excited again, and then afterwards they go to the step of like of like mastery where it becomes subconscious mastery and they know how it does. Now, by the way, these four steps apply to anything you ever know, everything you ever learn. Like if you learn a bicycle, first times, you're gonna be super excited that you learned a bicycle. Soon enough, you're gonna fall five times and you realize, oh, this is a little bit more difficult than I thought it is. And then you really kind of start being good, but you're not yet one of these bicycle riders that goes, jumps off cliffs and do, does all kinds of stuff and all kinds of crazy stuff and, and goes in the, in the, in the um, and so on. That's like the mastery bicycle. So, but you go through everything, walking, any business has to go through those four phases. People don't understand that though. So they're giving up after once they hit phase number two. And if, but if you know that this is happening, no matter what, it's like, Oh, there's phase number two. Let me go through it. So what I, what I see is really not, it's not, not, not the system. It's, it's people, uh, it's people just going, doing the steps and then get sidetracked, distracted, like everything else. And the way to fix that, in my opinion, is by, by committing and by actually having a big reason why this is important. You gotta have that emotional carrot in front of you that says like, if I get this done, this is how life will look on the other side. This is what I, how, my, how my life will look. This is how, how I can change things around me. This is how my family is gonna be different. Like if this business allowed us to retire my dad, for example, two and a half years or early. Uh, other than uh, earlier than he would have retired otherwise. This business allowed us to quit our jobs 30 years early than we would have uh, retired earlier. Uh, this business allows us to, uh, to spend extensive time with family members in our, in, uh, at home in Germany. This business allows us to live healthier. This business allows us to live in our beautiful home and, and, and not have to paint it ourselves, right? So these are all little whys that if you put those together, they become such a strong why that it pulls you through that but that's why people give up because the system itself is about the simplest that you can go. I, I think that's all so accurate. And, I, and in, in, in any business, right? I mean, you and I, we've been in business for decades. And I mean, on the last show, we were just talking to somebody that I hired to come in and, and look at my business and tell me where I'm screwing it up so that I can do better. Uh, that cycle repeats itself constantly. And for, for people who have, um, you know, the rabbit chasing disease, uh, as you and I both have, that's really hard because it's easy to get excited about something. It's hard to stay excited about something. It's right. hard to, to make whatever it is that you've got better. Um, but that's really, really important. And I think the only way to do that, Jack, uh, let me know if you agree with this, but I think the only way to do that is to have help from other people. I think, it, I think it's, you have to have some, a support system. You have to have somebody who is better than you um, to help you figure out how to make yourself better. Right. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. That's why when we now teach this, we don't, we have a course, but we don't even sell the course alone anymore because, uh, the, because otherwise it just becomes shelf help. People buy a course, get excited, put it in the bookshelf or it's a virtual course in our case, but there's still a, a binder. They put the binder in the bookshelf and they forget about it. In our case, the only way somebody can even work with us now is if they get the course, but they get it with the software and with some training that all comes together. So they be trained in the process right away. And they know the, how the process all works and how the automations and the systems work. Or right now, I'm, for example, I'm taking a group of students through a coaching program right now where, where, we, where I'm, every time I'm telling them, here's the goal. The goal is to get you to about week six, because on week six, you're getting your first offer accepted. Week six to eight, you get your first offers accepted that you're doing. And once you have your first offer accepted, you're through these first three phases, right? You're, in, you're, you're like past the spot. The goal is always to get somebody past that second step that I talked about, because once they've done their first deal, they're like, their light bulb goes off and they're like, yep. oh my God, that wasn't all that hard. Right. So we are, we're specializing on taking them there and then from there are helping them scale it. But yeah, on, uh, with accountability, with, with follow up, with all these pieces around it. And, and, and that's the way that, that success is done because unless you're one of these kind of like Marine Corps kind of guys that are trained and for years and years and years trained to just not give up no matter what. Right. 
then, then on, and to force yourself into discipline. But that's like the one percent of the population they have that level of discipline. Right. Most of us don't. Most of us get sidetracked. You see that in the diet. You see that in the thing, and 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 in those kind of areas, everyone gets sidetracked. So you need that accountability in order to make sure that you that you push through those things that you now have derailed you again and again and again and again in the past. It's so important. And I think it's overlooked by so many people. Uh, in, like information in business, is everywhere. You're like information yeah, is everywhere. You can, you can get information today. for free everywhere. But um, yeah, especially today. I mean, you can get yeah. it, literally anything, uh, even stuff you have to pay for. You can, you get in there, people will hack it and get it for free. You can get everything for free. But I think moving forward many times, um, it just requires, um, I mean, just like what we just did in my business. And Jack, we've done that how many times now? I mean, even when I was in your mastermind group, I was constantly trying to figure out who could help get the business and make the business move forward better than it was. Um, yeah, I, I joined just- a mastermind. Of, well, it's not a mastermind. It's a group where we go to MIT in Boston once a year for four days. Right. And there's like 65 entrepreneurs. And the first time I joined them, I didn't know anyone, obviously. And I very soon realized there's guys in there that run $100 million companies. And there's guys in there that run $1.1 million company because the minimum you have to have is a seven-figure business to be part of that. And, um, and what I really very quickly saw, which has surprised me at the time, was that the $100 million guys talk to other $100 million guys all the time about who is the next mentor coach who they're bringing in to improve their business and, and, and who they're hiring for this and who they're hiring for that, not as full-time people, but like which coach they have for this and which coach and consultant they're bringing in for all these things. And I was like, well, they're easy telling, right? Because they have $100, a million dollar businesses. They can do that. As I talked to those people, I realized that my thinking was wrong. My thinking was 100% wrong that I realized that the reason why they have $100 million businesses is because they understood that they're the way they are today could never have brought this company to $100 million if right. they would have not had the advisors. So those that brought in advisors quicker, more frequent, and 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 then pick the best ones and so on. Those were the ones that grew the fastest. Those were the ones, the ones that held on to it's like, I can do this all by myself, were the ones that were hovering at the $1.2 million level and not growing at all. So it's really, it's the other way around. The $100 million guys were $100 million guys because of the advisors and the consultants and the coaches they hired. And it's not that they could hire them because they're $100 million. They hired them and they couldn't afford them in order to get to the point where they now can afford whatever the heck they want. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I can attest to the fact that land is a, is a great investment. Um, as I've done a, a few of my own land deals and they're you've done tons of them, right? You've uh, done, you've done really great in the yeah. land, land business, a uh, little different and, and than and us, but, but, but great. Yeah. And, and goes to show that, I mean, I've, I've talked to several of your, of your students um, and some of them follow exactly what you do. And some of them have, like you said, ventured out into a little more development type stuff. They're working with builders. They're working on larger deals. All of it works. You just, you, I think the most important thing for people is what we were talking about earlier, which is the biggest stumbling block. Uh, this works. You just have to work it and you have to get past the struggle, right? There, every single thing you start, no matter what it is, has a struggle. You got to get through it. Once you get through the struggle, it's, it's like a hockey stick. And, um, I encourage anybody out there who is stuck. This is literally one of the easiest businesses you can do. And it's, I mean, I say easiest because of the entry, the entry level to this is so low in the real estate world. There isn't anything better than that as far as an entry point. Um, and that's part of the reason why I did a lot of this. It's just an easy thing to do. It's not that it's, there's no work. Report, one of our students reported yesterday that I got a deal for under contract for $56. That's a pretty low entry point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most <laughs> of course, that's can... not going to be a hundred thousand dollar profit. That's going to be like a three thousand, four thousand dollar profit, but still. But you know what? For for some people, that's a huge deal. Right. That's a huge deal. And my first deal was was nineteen thousand and change. It wouldn't have mattered if it was nineteen thousand or if it was three thousand, because the most important thing about that first deal, Jack, I think you'll probably agree with me is that you got a deal and proved the concept and now you know that it works and all you got to do is work it. That's right. what changed for me. 
I was like, holy crap, this real estate thing that I paid for <laughs> actually works. And now all I got to do is just go do more of it and I'm going to make more money. And of course, there's a lot more to it than that, but you learn that stuff as you go, 100%, uh, like yeah. we were talking about. Um, man, any final, any final thoughts for everybody, Jack, about the, the land business or... No, I mean, uh, I know there's uh, the listeners are interested in real estate and the real talk about real estate. So, um, so be just know that uh, that every real estate investing, every business out there, period, requires work. The thing is, what you want to do, in my opinion, is you want to look at multiple kinds of real estate. If real estate is your choice, you want to look at multiple kinds of businesses and then compare compare it for, to number one, are you going to enjoy it? Because if you're not going to enjoy it, chances are you're not going to stick with it, right? Ron and I are going to talk about real estate to the last breath that we have. Because once I found the real estate, I just love it. I love business above all, but I also love real estate. And so I talk my wife even to death until she, until we, we joke that, that I'll talk her so much to death, even in bed until I hear Michelle, Michelle, and there's no more answer coming back. Right. So, because it's just, I'm just passionate about it. Like you ask people like when you, when you found your calling is if you can, if you talk about it, even if nobody's listening to it, or if, if you don't get paid for it or so on, like, and that's real estate to me. I, I'll talk to, about, I talk to anyone about all day long. It's just my thing. But, but you got to find your thing. And, and it might be, but if your real estate is it, then look at the different kinds of real estate and the different thing and then really figure out what does it take behind the scenes to make it happen. Compare those. See where your knowledge level is. If you're already advanced, like, for example, we now do also apartment complex uh, and syndications or investments, and you do those wrong, right? If, I, if somebody would have come to me with an apartment complex deal when I started out in real estate, I would have been screaming, running the other way, because I would have not even understood the terminology. I would not have understood the numbers. I would have not understood anything about it, and I would have colossally screwed that thing up. So... So land flipping was the right thing for me at a time because we didn't have to deal with all these things. But land flipping gave us the cash, gave us the confidence, gave us the capabilities, right? And gave us the courage to then after a while go, you know what? We made all this money. Let me look at, let me, let us buy a few single family homes as rental properties and, and, and invest in that. And then, well, that worked well, right? That was, now we have nice cash flow from those. Well, let's buy a few more. So we bought like almost 50 of them. And then after a while, we're like, well, we like that, but we like really, it's, a, it's still kind of slow buying one at a time or two or three at a time. Why don't we just buy a hundred at a time? There was another learning curve, but we were ready for it at that time then, right? Because we had now years and years of experience in terminology. And then we had the, we had the fundamentals, we had the money, we had the, we had the experience with single families, we had the experience in management. So pick where you are and pick something that you reasonably, there's always going to be a growth curve, but that you reasonably can wrap your arms around and learn to do. And if you're already making a ton of money, then just stick to what you do. And if you like it, stick to what you do and just invest your money with Ron and those and, and, and guys like that, right? So, but, but the thing is, if you want to actively do something, look around, honestly estimate where are you knowledge-wise and time-wise, and then find the niche that you have the biggest, that, that you have the biggest attraction to, but it's also from a knowledge level, the closest for you to be able to master. Because once you're successful in one, being successful in all the other ones becomes so freaking much easier. Yep, 100%, plus all of your network that you've built and everything else just makes right. it so much easier as well. Um, Jack, man, I really appreciate it. That was some, some wisdom in that last piece, guys. Um, I know you've heard me say it before, but um, Jack explained it a little bit different. You got to find someone and you got to find something that you can believe in that you really like. And then you need to go all in, all in. And then you can expand from there once you've gotten it um, kind of dialed in. Um, Jack, where can people find you if they want to connect um, and learn more about your forever cash program and, and everything else that you're doing? I know you got syndications and all kinds of other things you're doing. How can people connect with you and, and find you? Yeah, we currently actually don't do syndications anymore, but uh, we uh, we to put the pause button on that. We're buying still, but we're looking to buy. Uh, we 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 have our pool of investors that we work with and so on. But uh, we are. Um, you can find us about the land flipping. You can go to landprofitfund.com, like having fun, right? Landprofitfund.com. 
Um, and you can also join our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group about the land flipping, which is called Land Profit Generator Real Estate Investing Group. So Land Profit Generator Real Estate Investing Group. So that's probably the best two places to come and find out uh, about it. And if you want to know more about the syndication, you can go to orbitinvestments.com. There's a couple of links there. But as I said, right now, we, we put a little bit of pause button on there, but we are mainly focusing on um, – on the on the land deals and on uh, on the educational part of things and and then we we buy here and there we buy something but uh, either we buy it ourselves or we buy it with a small group of investors right now. Yeah, well, that's kind of where that's kind of where I'm at too. Um, Wonderful. Deal, deals are a little harder to find in the multifamily space, but when you get them, they're sweet. Um, right. Absolutely. Love land, guys. Go check him out. Landprofitfund.com. I'm a member of his uh, Facebook group. It's excellent. Um, tons and tons of information. Lots of people on there who are um, talking constantly about land and how, to, how it works and things that they're doing and asking very educated questions it's um, really, so on Facebook, Land Profit Generator. Um, yeah. Excellent place. It's really well, a group where our students hang out and help each other be our students and us are hanging out and I, Michelle and I go in there on a daily basis, answer question. Our successful students are in there. Our coaches are in there. Everyone is in there helping each other just answer questions and get over the next little little bump and little bump and little bump towards towards, towards the, the success because it's really not hurdles. It's more like little questions here and there, little questions in there that yep. people make in their minds to be bumps. But it's like uh, then once you get the answer, you just get over each uh, all over them and there's like success story after success story being shared. It's really, in my opinion, one of the best Facebook groups on Facebook because it's it's oriented towards truly helping each other succeed. It, it really is. Um, so if, if you're interested in this at all, go check it out. Facebook land profit generator, tons and tons of great information on there and some really, really high level people um, contributing in there. Not the least of which Jack and Michelle Bosch. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you being on. Thank you for having me, Ron. All right, everybody till next time, go out there, subscribe, share the podcast with everybody and uh, make sure you leave a review if you love this uh, episode. And then, you know, give us, a, give us a like, give us a review. If you need to hear about something in particular with respect to business, real estate, or life, send it in. We'll probably do a show on it. Thanks a lot, everybody. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to GetRealEstateSuccess.com.